Hello and welcome to this tutorial on 10 base T Ethernet and Ethernet hubs. Now, if you haven't yet seen the 10 base 2 and 10 base 5 Ethernet tutorial, please do so before continuing with this tutorial. And it's also worth your while to quickly view the Ethernet repeater tutorial. Concepts in both of those are applicable here, and we rely on that background knowledge. So in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the newer Ethernet specifications after 10 base 2 and 10 base 5. Along with those specifications, there's some new hardware. And we'll talk about hubs and switches. Switches, just briefly. A re the remainder of the subject matter for CCNA and CCNT really focuses on switches. So there are many other tutorials that explore switches. They're much more feature rich than hubs. So we'll get into them in other areas. Today, we'll just focus on hubs as they relate to 10 base T. And finally, we'll take a look at the modern LAN. We'll see how this, these new specifications work along with a hub to create a local area network. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, our three Ethernet specifications we'll be looking at are Ethernet, Fast Ethernet, and Gigabit Ethernet. Ethernet was developed in 1990. Fast Ethernet was 1995, and Gigabit Ethernet in 1999. All three were put out by the I3E, and the first thing to note is the speed of each specification. Ethernet's at 10, Fast Ethernet 100, Gigabit 1000. So you can see as we progress, we keep getting faster and faster. There's more information to push. There's an alternative name for each one, 10 base T, 100 base T, and 1000 base T. You also notice Gigabit Ethernet has 1000 base LX and SX. Gigabit Ethernet can be supported over fiber as well as copper. So LX stands for long haul, SX for short haul. And you'll see on the next line the I3E names for each standard, 802.3, 3U, AB is for the copper standard, the 10 base, the, sorry, the 1000 base T, and 802.3Z covers the two fiber standards, which is LX and SX. So really the, the takeaway here is gigabit can be supported over copper and fiber. Each also has a maximum segment size, and that's 100 meters, for all of the copper implementations, for the fiber SX for short haul, 550 meters, and the long haul you can see is five kilometers, pretty big. These are the specifications you'll find in use in all modern LANs. There's even 10 gigabit ethernet as well. We don't cover that here, but it does exist. Okay, we have our 10 base T local area network here. 10 base T addressed a bunch of issues that we struggled with in the 10 base 2 and 10 base 5 specifications. First, we have new cabling here. Whereas we used coax cable, both thin net and thick net, in the 10 base 2 and 5 specifications, here we use UTP cabling or unshielded twisted pair. This is less expensive than coax. It's much easier to work with and install. It's thinner, it's more pliable and, and flexible and just generally easier to work with. UTP is made up of not just a single copper core like coaxial, it has actually up to eight small copper wires inside. We have a separate tutorial on UTP because there are some really good details to walk away with and to know about UTP. So we'll just mention it here briefly, but definitely have a chance to check out the other tutorial. So new cabling. The second difference is availability. You can call it that at least. If you remember, the 10 base 2 and 10 base 5 network here use the large coax as our main Ethernet segment. The problem there is if you encountered a problem on that copper cable right there, it could and, and most likely did bring down the entire segment so no one could communicate. Again, this is a copper cable and it was shielded, but it was still susceptible to problems. Again, it's cabling. You could get a kink in it, you could break it. So that was a big problem. 
Let's go back to our 10 base T network. Here, a 10 base T network uses a centralized device for all connections. So we've, re we've removed that coax Ethernet segment and we've replaced it with a hub. So we'll be talking about hubs. I mentioned earlier, it doesn't have to be a hub. This could also be a switch. And switches are more advanced. They have better features, more robust features than hubs. And we dive into those deeply in other tutorials. Here, we'll just use a hub. And if you recall the Ethernet repeater tutorial, a hub is just like an Ethernet repeater. What it does is, if PC1 here sources a frame and sends it to the hub, internally, the hub simply repeats it out every connected port. So just like an Ethernet repeater, the hub just repeats that frame, that signal, out each port. Note it does not send it back out the port upon which it received it. So PC1 is not going to get a copy of the signal it just sent. But these other two PCs down here, they will get a copy. Also, just like an Ethernet repeater, a hub lies at layer one of the OSI model. So that Ethernet segment of 10 base 2 and 10 base 5, the bus that we talked about, that bus now lives inside the hub. You could think of it like this. So when a signal comes in, let's say our PC here sends a signal, sending some frames, it hits this bus, travels along the bus, and is distributed to every connected port. So you can think of that segment as being shrunken and thrown inside the hub. So our shared bus moves from the segment to the hub. And that's good because if one of these cable, cables breaks, let's say this one, somebody steps on it or runs over it with something, it doesn't bring down our, our entire network. That would have happened had we still been using 10 base 2 or 10 base 5. A hub is sturdier in many respects when compared to that coax cable, that main Ethernet segment. Hubs can break like anything else, but there are far, I guess, fewer opportunities for it breaking when you compare it to that long Ethernet cable. Again, keep in mind those Ethernet segments in 10 base 2 and 5 could go up to 185 or 500 meters depending on what standard. The last point to note here is CSMA with CD. That still exists on a 10 base T network because we still have our bus. As long as we have our bus here, we have the opportunity for collisions when more than one piece, PC sources a packet. So carrier sense multiple access with collision detection, as we talked about a bit in the 10 base 2 and 5, and there's also a tutorial directly getting into all the details of CSMA CD that is still used on a 10 base T local area network. Okay, and that's it. There you have it. That is a 10 base T network with a hub. So let's summarize what we went over today. So today we covered Ethernet, Fast Ethernet, and Gigabit Ethernet, the new specifications, and we talked a bit about the different speeds, the different names, and the different mediums they use. Some just copper, Gigabit Ethernet, copper, and fiber. We discuss a little bit about the new cabling, UTP, unshielded twisted pair. It's easier to use. It's also more cost effective. Those are some of the benefits. And we discussed briefly some of the new hardware involved, namely hubs, switches as well, but we focused on hubs. And a hub is a centralized point similar to an Ethernet repeater. And that is where your shared bus is located. And it sits at the center of a local area network. And there are some benefits there. If you have a broken cable, your whole network doesn't go down as, a pair, as opposed to 10 base 2 and 5 networks. Finally, because the shared bus is still used, we know that carrier sense with multiple, multiple access with collision detection is still used, CSMA, CD. And that's everything. That concludes the 10 base T Ethernet and Hubs tutorial. Thanks for watching.